awesome. And, you know, you have to be, have a healthy sense of, you know, respect. You don't want, you know, to get too close to the edge. It's a long way down. And it's that way with God. When we see him, or even just start to understand his character, we just, you know, it should, we should be awestruck. It's that, that, that awesome. But anyway, to wrap up, and by the way, when you're reading like the epistles written to the various churches and uh, um, throughout the Mediterranean, when you come to the part that says, finally, brethren, in closing, you know what that means, right? Things are going to go on for a while. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I while I was studying for this sermon, I, I came across uh, the writings of uh, Don Stewart, someone named Don Stewart. I guess he's a, well, among other things, he, he isn't a, a Christian apologist, but he's also kind of a tel televangelist. When I saw that, I was like, well, uh, I, I, I don't like televangelists. You end up with a lot of guys that seem to end up drawing a lot more attention to themselves than they do to the Lord. And uh, sometimes they do that so that they can reap a lot of financial gain from it. Um, Don Stewart seems to be okay from when I looked around. I researched him a little bit. Do um, you guys know J. Warner Wallace? He's written books like uh, God's Crime Scene. Uh, what is it? Uh, Forensic Faith. He was a uh, a cold case detective. He would find cases that no one had been able to solve for a long, long time, and he would go through them, and he. Uh, would figure out who who done it, and uh, he ended up applying that those skills to the study of you know Christ resurrection and the Bible and, and all that, and it came out being quite quite the Christian. And he's interviewed him. I, when I saw that, I thought, okay, so that's kind of a good endorsement. But then I noticed uh, when I was reading, what I'm about to go through with you now. Don Stewart's answers to our question, you know, why did God make us? I noticed the uh, web address. I'll go to it right now. Was um, oops, I should have had this picked up before it's there we go it was uh don stewart why did god create the universe and i looked at the web address blue letter bible.org you guys know the blue letter bible that a lot of us use on here i think uh, pastor chilson recommended it but it's a, it's a good it's a really good resource but uh I don't know how to get this by opening the Blue Letter Bible. I open it to look at verses. But if you go there, he goes through several steps. Number one, he created it for himself. Proverbs 16.4. I make you guys look up more, for more verses. The Lord has made everything for its own purpose, even the wicked for the day of evil. I guess that means when all accounts are settled. Romans 11.36. Okay, wrong, not Tom. 
wrong marks. So that's the liability of just using a real small phone. I like having a real small phone, but then I try to go on the internet and my thumb's too big to hit the right keys. Romans 1136. For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. He created it for himself. Colossians 1.16. For by him all things were created, both in the heavens and on earth, visible and is invisible. Oh, this sounds familiar. We already looked at that, but let's look at it again. Whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. And so he created everything, especially us, for himself. And he created us, created everything by his own will. By his own will. Look at Ephesians 1 5. He predestined us to, a, to adoption as sons through Jesus Christ to himself according to the kind intention of his will. So he predestined us to adoption as sons through, through Jesus Christ. So we aren't going to become like gods. We're not going to be heirs to him. We are not, he, you know, the, those two Mormon missionaries kept saying, well, he's our father. We are his children. Well, yeah, but we were adopted. We were, you know, estranged from him. And now we're adopted back into his family. I didn't say that, but I wish I had. Look at Revelation 4.11 again. Let's just look at that again. When I saw he used that, I said, ah, oh, all right. That's, that's the scripture verse I chose. Worthy are you, our, our Lord and our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and because of your will, they existed and were created. So he created us through his own will. And he created us for his own glory. Go back to Isaiah 43, 7. Everyone who is called by my name and whom I have created for my glory, whom I have formed, even whom I have made. Let's go to the first verse before that. That makes more sense. I will say to the north, give them up, and the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name. That's us, by the way. We are Christians. And whom I have created for my glory, his glory. Look at Psalm 19.1. And, okay, it's for the choir director, a Psalm of David, but then it goes on. The heavens are telling of the glory of God, and their expanse is declaring, declaring the work of his hands. So, it, everything is telling of the glory of God. We were made for his glory. We were made to, to make known his power and wisdom. Ephesians 3, 9, 3, 9 through 11. I think we've been there before. But... Start at 8. To me, the very last of all saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unfathomable riches of Christ and to bring to light what is the administration of the mystery which for ages has been hidden 
in God who created all things, so that, once again, the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the rulers and to the authorities in the heavenly places. In the heavenly places, he did not need to make us to make known his glory. I mean, so that we, so that he would have someone to make his glory known to. But his glory is made known by making us. In summary, and this is how uh, Mr. Stewart, Mark Stewart, sums it up. Don Stewart, sorry. We were made for no, no reason outside of God himself for his creative. There's no reason for his creative acts. Let me read that in context. The whole thing. The purpose was to make known his power and wisdom. Consequently, the Bible teaches there is, there is no reason outside of God himself for his creative acts. When I first started to, I think I've told you guys before that uh, when I first started trying to find my way back to Christ after being an atheist for like most of my life at the time, um, uh, one of the things that caught my attention was a broadcast of the world tomorrow. That's Herbert W. Armstrong. That's the Worldwide Church of God. It was a cult. It actually, after he died, it they changed. They became a very, very uh, mainline Christian denomination. Unfortunately, they gave up the Sabbath too, but I'd rather see that and see them continue to believe in cultic things. But one of the things he taught was God created us because he was lonely. And when I was first started going to Seventh-day Baptist Church, I mentioned that to my pastor, John Pyle. I just kind of looked, you know, I said, the Bible says why uh, God created us. He created us because he was lonely. And John looked at me. He said, Leland, it doesn't say that anywhere in the Bible. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh. But, but, but they said it on TV. They can't say it on TV if it's not true. It's like, but anyway, uh, of course, that was when I first started going to church and actually reading the Bible for myself once in a while. And I discovered apologetics. And from there, I got up to speed. But, but the fact is, he wasn't lonely. God is three persons. He didn't need to have someone to reveal his glory to. He was revealing his glory to himself through creating. He's creative. God's creative. It's like the ultimate artist. You know, artists just they got to paint or sculpt or or cook, you know, exquisite meals if they're that. We just you've experienced it too, you know. I heard someone say once that I think it was a young actress said her father was a businessman and but she's a She's in, she couldn't do that. She, she needs to do something more creative. Well, I'm sorry, but people who put business deals together are pretty creative. And so we all just have our own ways of being creative because we are reflecting God's nature. Anyway, let's, and this time I mean it, we're going to wrap up. Let's go to Psalm 104.31. Psalm 104, 31. Let the glory of the Lord endure forever. Let the Lord be glad in his works. He's doing this. He's glad he did this. And he should be. And look at Psalm 138, 5. And they will sing of the ways of the Lord, for great 
is the glory of the Lord, for they will sing. I think he's referring to us. Okay, and also angelic beings. We will sing of the ways of the Lord. He created because that's just how he is. For great is the glory of the Lord. So let's look forward to spending the rest of eternity being awestruck by the glory of the Lord, just enjoying fellowship directly with him. I, that's just hard to fathom. We'll be in fellowship with each other, I believe, forever. And that's, you know, when I look around at everybody, I say, okay, I'll be in fellowship with all of the saints after the rapture, but these people here, I'll be able to say, you remember when we were on earth in fellowship with each other then? And we'll be able to reminisce forever while we are being bathed in the blessings from God just because he loves us, because he wanted to demonstrate his glory by creating us in his image. Anyway, let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we do acknowledge that you are glorious beyond a, all measure and that you have revealed your glory by creating everything that has been creating, created, especially us who were created in your image and that we, unlike the other life forms that you created, we have a moral capacity. We can know what it, we should do. We should glorify you. And we look forward to glorifying you forever. Amen. And now I believe we have a benediction. So I think that was it, actually. And a musical postlude. Thank you all for coming today.